Hi, my name is Bethany Yeiser. I am president of the Cures Foundation, which I co-founded with Dr. Henry Nasrallah, who's here with me today, who is the scientific director. He is editor-in-chief of Current Psychiatry Journal and also editor-in-chief of Schizophrenia Research Journal. So today we're going to be talking about long-acting injectable antipsychotics, also known as LAIs. Dr. Nasrallah, could you tell us what these LAIs are and perhaps when they were first used clinically? Sure. Uh, LAIs, or long-acting antipsychotics, are, are a, a formulation, a type of formulation of antipsychotic medications, which are available in pill form, uh, most of them, uh, which uh, were developed uh, in the 70s yeah. in the U.S. And, uh, and began their use in the mid-70s. Uh, basically to, uh, to make sure that the medication is going into the patient's body and reaching the brain without interruption on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is a very useful uh, formulation because many of our patients don't take their pills consistently and they end up relapsing, which is very dangerous for their brain. Why do patients not adhere to oral medications? Yeah, unfortunately, patients with schizophrenia are incapable the majority of them incapable of adhering to medication, which is so vital. It's like people with diabetes have to take their insulin uh, or else they become sick again. People with high blood pressure have to take their medication oh, every day without interruption, otherwise they get the hypertension back. Well, patients with schizophrenia have many reasons that they cannot do it because of the illness itself. For example, uh, 80 to 90% of patients with schizophrenia do not have insight that they are sick. They, they are unable to recognize that they are ill. Anosognosia. Anosognosia right. is, the, is the technical term for it, yes. And uh, but lack of insight is the common words. And that, that's why we have to force them against their will to come to the hospital. By law, we can put them in the hospital, treat them against their will, and we can get a court order to medicate them against their will. Mm -hmm. So they get better in the hospital, but once they leave the hospital, the majority will stop their medication within a few days or almost immediately. And they end up relapsing, which is very dangerous for the brain because every psychotic relapse destroys hundreds of millions of brain cells. And that, that leads to disability. So that lack of insight is one cause, but there are other causes also. The, the patients have a severe cognitive impairment in memory. The memory of people with schizophrenia is really low. And they forget. They forget a lot of things, including pills. And then they have negative symptoms. Uh, negative symptoms is one of the well-known symptoms of schizophrenia, which include apathy, lack of motivation, inability to initiate an action. So that includes taking pills. They, do, they don't do a lot of things, including taking pills. How about side effects? And then side effects is another thing. When we, we try to educate all our patients in medicine. We tell them, you know, there's always a side effect. There's no medication without side effects. But patients with schizophrenia, because of their paranoid uh, thinking, uh, they, when, when they get a side effect like dry mouth, dizziness, constipation, you know, nausea, whatever, they interpret that as I'm being poisoned. Mm -hmm. And so the paranoia plays a role in, in ditching the drugs. And then finally, the, uh, the, the substance use. I mean, patients with schizophrenia, now that they live in the community, unlike the old days when they were hospitalized and protected in asylums, mm -hmm. uh, now they are in the community and have exposure to a lot of alcohol and, and drugs, illicit drugs. And almost 70% of the patients uh, with schizophrenia are either intoxicated or stoned on, on every day. And you cannot expect them to take their prescription pills when they're drunk or stoned. So that's another reason. You put them together and you realize these poor patients uh, don't know how harmful relapse is and they're incapable of taking pills, which work very well in the hospital because in the hospital, the nurses give it to them. They make sure they're swallowing it, not spitting it or cheeking it, which sometimes they do when they're paranoid. Uh, so in the hospital, the pills work great, but once they leave the hospital, all bets are off.